This Learn Electrics video is an introduction into basic electronics. In this video, we will look at resistors, a very important part of any electronic circuit. Without resistances, we would not have any electronic or electrical circuits. As well as resistances, we will look at current and how we control it in an electronic circuit. We will see how voltages affect the currents that flow and also look at the power the watts, in other words, in a circuit. The formulas that we use are the fundamental electrical formulas that you must know and they really are very easy to use. What are the different electrical units that we will see in this video? Well, we'll have voltage or volts, which we'll use the symbol V. Resistance is measured in ohms and we can use the omega symbol or the capital letter R. Current is measured in amps and we'll use either the capital letter I or capital A as a symbol. And power is measured in watts with the symbol W, although a lot of the time we will see it written as KW for kilowatts or thousands of watts. A 3000 watt electric kettle can also be labelled as a 3 kilowatt kettle. As we said, resistance is so important in electronic circuits. It lets us make adjustments to the current that flows around a circuit. It lets us measure things. It makes things happen. Look at any circuit diagram and you will see that it is full of resistors that use one or two popular drawing symbols as shown here. Either of the two styles can be used. It is your choice, although generally we try to stick to one style for each circuit drawing. Personally, I was brought up all those years ago on the solid block resistor drawing as shown at the bottom of the yellow box and so that is my preferred style. Variable resistors or adjustable resistors are an important component in many devices. They can be used to adjust temperatures, lighting, sound volume and so many other industrial processes. A fixed resistor has a set value. It is manufactured to a predetermined value and using the resistor colour code we can determine what this value is. Variable resistors also come in set values, but now a third contact on the resistor allows us to change the value. We can set a variable resistor to a maximum or a minimum value or some number in between. Two other symbols that we will use in this video are the battery symbol and the switch symbol. Other symbols will be introduced and explained as we come across them. Starting with the switch, there are many different symbols for switches but they all follow a similar style to the one shown here. A switch can be open, in other words breaking the circuit so that no current can flow through it. Or it can be closed, in which case current flows through the switch. We always assume that a closed switch will have zero resistance to the flow of electrical current. In other words, in the closed position the switch will not impede the flow of electrons. In this video, we will be looking at DC or direct current voltages. A battery is a DC voltage source. There is a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Think of your car battery. Positive is always positive and negative is always negative. How can we remember which terminal is which for a battery? Because knowing this will be important when looking at circuit diagrams. You must be able to identify positive and negative accurately every time. We have a long plate and a short plate, so which is which? This is where memory joggers come in very useful and for me personally I have used them all through my career. And the more stupid a memory jogger is the greater the chance of you actually remembering it. The longer top plate can be split into two shorter plates that are the same length as the short lower plate. And now if we rotate just one of the split plates we can make a cross with the other half, a cross, a plus sign. The longer plate can be made into the plus symbol, so that must be the positive plate. And the short plate, well, that looks like a negative symbol, so that is negative. Long plate, make a plus sign, positive. Short plate, negative sign, negative. Easy. And the more stupid the association, the more it will stick in your memory for years to come. Let's look at a basic DC circuit 
and some important naming conventions. We have drawn here a battery and resistor connected together. We use the symbol V for our voltage source, the battery, and here we have marked a positive and negative terminals. If the circuit is complete, which it is, the voltage will cause a current to flow around the circuit. Current is the flow of electrons, much the same as water current flows along a river. How much current flows will be determined in part by the resistance of the circuit. We have shown a simple resistor here that is resisting the flow of electrons. The bigger the value of resistance, the more difficult it is for electrons to flow. So far so good. These are our three basic units. A voltage causes a current to flow through a resistance. Many circuits will have switches installed at certain key points. If the switch is closed, this will allow current to flow through that part of the circuit. A closed switch should offer no resistance to the flow of electricity. Open the switch and the electrons will stop flowing. There is now a gap in the circuit continuity and the current that was flowing through that part of the circuit will fall to zero. There are two types of current flow in electronics and we have to go back in history to understand why. When electrical science was still in its infancy, the scientists of the day, Volta, Ampere and so on, knew that something moved around the circuit and made things happen. But they didn't know at this stage about electrons. Therefore, they imagined that this thing called electricity moved from the positive terminal and returned to the negative terminal. And why not? This made sense and they could explain all the things they saw and measured using this idea. And this has come to be known as conventional current flow. However, we now know that it is these little things called electrons that move around a circuit and they move in the opposite direction. They actually flow from the negative to the positive and this is called electron flow. We, however, will use conventional current flow along with most of the engineering world. We will look at current as flowing from the positive to the negative. It works just as well, it is the accepted way and everybody understands it. But how much current flows? That is a good question and there are exact engineering laws that can tell us this. If we look at the circuit shown here, we have a 10 volt battery and a 20 ohm resistor and we want to know how much current flows around the circuit. We can calculate this using Ohm's law, named after George Ohm, a German mathematician and school teacher. This is one of the fundamental rules or laws of electronics and you must know Ohm's law. If you want to be good with electronics then you need to be good with Ohm's law. There is no way of avoiding it. Learn it and you have a lifelong skill. Ohm's law tells us how voltage, current and resistance are related to each other. It is so very easy to use. If we know any two values then we can calculate the third value. The triangle actually tells us the mathematical relationship between the variables. The voltage can be calculated by multiplying the current I by the resistance R. If we want to know the current, the letter I, then we must first know the voltage and the resistance. The triangle shows us the voltage over the resistance and this is the mathematical calculation that you do. Voltage over resistance, a divide operation. If we need to know the resistance and we know the voltage and current, the triangle tells us that we must put the voltage over the current. Resistance is voltage divided by current. And that is Ohm's law. Learn it, know it, use it. And in the next few slides we will have some worked examples. So go back to our question. How much current flows around a circuit with a 10 volt battery and a 20 ohm resistance? Start by drawing the Ohm's Law Triangle. And this is exactly how I do it, even today. Now, draw an empty triangle below. Into the empty triangle, write in what you know in the correct position. We know the voltage, 10 volts. We know the resistance, 20 ohms. And the empty box, the current, can now be found by calculation. Look at the triangle. It actually shows the calculation, 10 over 20. 10 divided by 20, which is 0.5 amps or half an amp. And that is our answer. 
0 0.5 amps is flowing around the circuit. And how easy is that? And it doesn't get any harder. What would happen to the current if we doubled the voltage? We'll keep the resistance to the same 20 ohms, but the voltage is now 20 volts. Follow the same Ohm's law method. Draw an empty triangle and write in what you know. We now have 20 volts divided by 20 ohms, and this gives us one amp of current. We doubled the voltage and the current doubled. What happens to the current if we increase the resistance? Let's have a go at this one. What is the current flowing if the voltage is 10 volts and the resistance is 500 ohms? Follow the Ohm's law method. Fill in the empty triangle and out pops the answer. 10 divided by 500 will give us a current of 0 0.02 amps, just two one hundredths of an amp. As the resistance increases, it is harder for the current to get through. So our next question, how many watts is that? The power in a circuit is measured in watts and it is important that we do not put too much power through electronic components. A resistor that has a maximum power rating of half a watt may be damaged if the watts exceed this, so we need to know. To calculate the watts, we use the formula V squared divided by R. The voltage squared divided by the resistance and we already have that information. V squared is simply the voltage multiplied by itself. So 10 volts times 10 volts is 100. And 100 divided by the resistance of 500 ohms is 0 0.2 watts. Our resistor must have a power rating of at least 0 0.2 watts, otherwise it may burn out. We would choose a quarter watt resistor for this job and this is a standard wattage. Now try this one. A 15 volt battery is supplying 0 0.3 amps to a circuit. There are two calculations to do. First of all, what value is the resistor? And secondly, how many watts of power are in the circuit? We can work this out in two stages. Do the Ohm's law part first and calculate the value of the resistor. You already know the voltage and the current. It is now an easy task to calculate the resistance. 15 volts divided by 0 0.3 amps is 50 ohms of resistance. Now that we have the resistance, we can work out the wattage. Use the formula V squared divided by R. So 15 times 15 divided by 50 is 4.5 watts. It's not difficult if you follow this pattern. If you know two values, then you can work out a third. Of course, there are many other formulas available to us, and we will introduce these in subsequent videos along with worked examples of the formula in action. For now, let's look at the formulas so far. We can calculate the voltage in a circuit from Ohm's law, and we can use Ohm's law to tell us the current that is flowing in that circuit. A slight rearrangement of the formula, and we can calculate the resistance. And then there is the power in the circuit, the wattage, which we can determine from the voltage and the resistance. A voltage increase will increase the current and watts, whilst a voltage decrease will decrease the current and the watts. The opposite of this is the resistance. An increase in resistance will decrease the current and the watts, and a decrease in resistance will increase the current and the watts. An important note, current and watts will change only if something else changes. They are the result of something else happening. Current or watts can never change the voltage or resistance. And finally, for this video, a look at variable resistors. Often called potentiometers, these are adjustable resistors. They can be found in large values of resistance with quite coarse control. One turn of the control knob might adjust the resistance value from half a million ohms to zero. There are smaller values for more accurate changes, say a 100 ohm variable resistor, and there are multi-term potentiometers for very accurate instrumentation control. Shown here, this circuit can be adjusted from 120 ohms down to just 25 ohms, 
and we'll look at these in more detail soon. A potentiometer is a word meaning adjusting the potential or voltage. We can use a potentiometer to vary the voltage or potential difference in a part of a circuit. A volume control is a good example and we show here a very simple circuit on this slide. Here is a variable resistor, a potentiometer that is used to output 7.5 volts in its middle position. It is tapping off a proportion of the 15 volts that is on the circuit. If we adjust the potentiometer or pot as we call it in one direction we can raise the voltage to 10 volts to get maximum volume. Adjusting it in the opposite direction we can reduce the voltage to just 5 volts and turn the volume down to a minimum. In the next video we will look in detail at series and parallel resistances with lots of worked examples. If you want to understand electronics then it is so important to master series and parallel networks and Kirchhoff's laws. We will move on to capacitors, diodes, coils, transformers, voltage regulators, tuning circuits, full wave rectifiers and so much more. We hope you enjoyed this video on basic electronics and that you have put more knowledge into your mental toolbox. There are many more videos to come. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and please press the notify button to be sure of not missing our next video. Subscribing also helps us too and we really do appreciate this. Tapping in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.